Whiskey. Uh-huh. Tim Hager. Two scrubbing brushes. Another pint. Where's your money? Well, I... Uh... <laughs> Two chimneys. Poster, would you deny drink to a dying man? A man should spend his money on food for his family. Mrs. Scoggins, would you come over here? I want to show you a new piece of material. It's fresh off the Boston packet. Isn't that fine quality now? Feel it. Be a wonderful dress for your little girl. Don't you think so? Hmm? It's money, money, money with your poster. Nothing but money. I've been sorry for him ever since his wife ran off with that lieutenant. If he'd spent less on whiskey, he wouldn't have lost his wife. Let me show you another piece. Drunk or sober, Ma would have left him anyhow. She was that kind. Yeah, how do you like that for quality, huh? Let him have it. Very well, Tim Hager. You'll have your whiskey. But this is the last time... All right, I... all right, Poster, no preaching. <laughs> This little girl I feel sorry for. Poor little Jenny Hager. Faster, faster! Can't you swim any faster? You're not even trying! Faster, faster, faster! Faster, faster! Come on, faster! <laughs> on something. I hate losers. You're scared of the water. I can't swim. You'll never learn till you get out in deep water. But I'm gonna go. <laughs> oh, why don't you go help your father in the store? Measure out coffee and count wormy <laughs> You're no good down here. Go on, Ephraim. You can't swim till you try. Go ahead, Ephraim. <laughs> He'll drown. I'm scared. Let's pull him out. No. No, he's scared to death. Oh, oh. Oh, oh, oh. Then he'll drown. Who cares? Oh. What's all that racket about? Jeff, oh. go The Jeff, run for him. Poor Ephraim. Poor, poor Ephraim. I'll fix Come on, Mike. Hey, what's going on here? Good gracious, it's... It's Ephraim Poster. What's he doing in the river? He can't swim, can he? Oh, what happened, Jenny? Those awful boys pushed him in. Poor Ephraim, poor Nearly poor murder, Ephraim. that's what it is. If it hadn't been for you, Jenny, he'd have drowned. You all right, Ephraim? The boys didn't do it. There we are. Ah, Tim, just in time. Huh? This little girl of yours is just... Tim Hager. Stumbling drunk in the middle of the day. You ought to be looking after you, Jenny, not going from tavern to Jenny, tavern like... I've no wife to care for either of us, no. It takes money to bring up a fine lass, Your Honor. You mean it takes money to keep yourself drunk? Papa, let Jenny come to boarding school with me. Would you like to come to boarding school with me, Jenny? Would you? Boarding school? Yes. I like that. I can't send you to boarding school. But you could come live at the house and earn your keep, I guess. Help in the kitchen and run errands for Mrs. Saladine. No. If I can't go to boarding school with Meg, I'll stay with my father. Hmm. All right. He is your father, at least in the eyes of the law. Now, you look after that girl of yours, Tim Hager, and stop being a disgrace to Banger. Thank you, Your Honor. Drive on. Now, young poster, we'll take you to your father's store. That tight biscuit, sour blooded old skinflint. You might be better off in Mrs. Saladine, Jenny. Not in Mrs. Saladine's kitchen. I've no money to bring you up properly. Never mind. Before long, we'll have everything. Houses and carriages, horses and kitchen. All those things, my lass. You're a wee bit young. Just as soon as I grow up, we'll have everything we want. Because I'm going to be beautiful. Empty.
look. Mm, nice, nice. Enough ribbon? Mm, not for me, but the real ladies have different ideas. Oh, get some more color in your cheeks. And uh, bite your lips whenever no one's looking. Men love red lips. Let's go down and meet the packet. Why should I? The sailors will all come up here anyway. Oh, but the best ones get picked off down at the dock. Listen, honey, with your looks, you don't have to worry. Why, you can get the youngest and the best-looking man on the river. I don't want the youngest. I want the rich. Jenny, that's a recipe for trouble. Don't worry about me. I can handle trouble. I know you can. <laughs> Whiskey. All right, Mr. Hager, but you needn't holler. Someone might hear you out in the street. Who, for instance? Jenny, for instance. Yeah. Put some life into those men. Come on. Come down to see the cargo? Mm -hmm. It's exciting. Yeah, we get used to it after a time. I suppose I import more stuff than any other man in the state of Maine. How many vessels do you think I own? I count from the lumber barges. Fifty-six. Who told you? Somebody. Hmm. Here, have some tea. Got a handkerchief? Oh, I don't need one. Take a good handful of it there. It's a present. People think it's easy to get to be a rich man. And believe me, it's hard. When I first came to this town over 30 years ago, with nothing but a peddler's pack on my back, I... Hey, you! You! Get away from that girl! Hey, you! Wait! Well, I was just saying to myself, I bet my good old friend Tim Hager is sitting right this very minute in the purple whale and wouldn't mind passing the time of day with me. Lena? What do you want? A glass of whiskey for Mr. Hager. Sure. Go on, Tim. Drink up. The next one's on me. You'll not tell Jenny? No, of course not. I promise her not to touch it. <laughs> Your Jenny. You know, she's getting so she wants to boss everything and everybody. <laughs> she's grown too beautiful for her own good. Why do you always wish to be talking about Jenny? Oh. I don't think I like why you always want to be talking about Jenny. Oh, now wait, Tim. Give him a rum and whiskey. We're not bringing him a Jenny. I know what you're up to. I? Oh, why, I'm just a dried-up old herring. She's too young and beautiful. So is your lad. And you sent him to Cambridge to keep him away from her. Ephraim? Uh. Why, he's too shy and scared of her. She's full of spirit. She's for somebody like that first mate. What first mate? Why, uh... What first mate? Why, Lewis. Why, first aboard the gadfly. He's as handsome as the old Nick, that boy. When I saw him and your Jenny walking away just now, I said to myself, there's a youngster who knows his way about with the women. Where are you going? Home. You're like your mother, a wanton. That's what you are. 
just like your mother. You'd like to keep me here forever, wouldn't you? Well, you couldn't hold mother and you won't hold me. Aye, but I will, Jenny. No. This isn't the life I was born for. Men like me. And it's the men who have the money in this world. When a proper man comes along... You take him walking in the dark and kill him, most likely. I know you don't want any man ever to look at me. But they do. You lead them on, Jenny. It's too easy for you to turn a man's head. Not with you at my elbow all the time. There have been dozens of proper men ready to take me out of this trap. But will you ever let me go? I know Mr. Poster wants me. I made him want me. What do you think of that? There's a devil in it, Denny Heger. A devil straight from the bad place. And I'm going to whip him out of here. You're going to beat me. This is one beating you're not like. Jenny girl, who's after you? Father, took after me with a whip. Land of promise, Mr. Poster. Come help her, Mrs. Hollis. There now, Jenny. Don't worry. Everything's going to be all right. You bathe her and rub some butter on them bruises and put her in my bed. Oh, that Tim Hager, he ought to be birched. That would take six men to do it. He's big, Mrs. Hollis, but no bigger than righteousness. If the town don't birch him, he'll be birched by the Lord. You showed good sense, Jenny, in coming to me. I'll do this. You stay outside. Oh, there now. If you keep on crying, your face will be all swollen up tomorrow. And that's no way for a pretty face to be. He held me with one hand so, so that I couldn't move. And then he beat me and beat me until I thought I... Look. Look at my back. Oh, I can't go back there. I can't. He's going to kill me. You're not going anywhere until you're healed and sound again. Now you get out of these things while I heat up some water. You'll be as good as new and just... Yes, Mr. Poster. Something you wanted? her out into the night like a dog that wouldn't obey. Reverend, it's the rum that does it. We ought to scourge every tavern keeper out of town and into the river. If I had my way... We ought to be deciding about the girl, Deacon Adams. There's been enough scourging for one night. One thing is decided. The girl mustn't go back to her father. No. Someone must take her in. I would. Only my daughter Mary doesn't like the poor girl. Then she's not for your house, Reverend. Make a bad situation worse. I guess we could use her to clean and maybe help in the kitchen. But a young girl eats like a man. It's more than victuals, Deacon Adams. Your wife has all the understanding in her heart that a man could ask. But Jenny's of marriageable age. Hmm. Yes, that's bad. And yet we, we can't turn her loose on the town's charity. She needs a home. Well, yours is fairly empty. 
Oh, no. <laughs> Leave me out of it. It wouldn't be suitable for me to take her into my house. I have no wife. You have a housekeeper? A very respectable woman. But she might leave me, and I'm not able to get another. We'd have a scandal in the town. Aye. No. Marriage is the only answer. And the answer to that is a younger man. What about your son Ephraim? They used to be so much together. Ah, oh, he's a schoolboy, frittering away his time at college. She needs a responsible man. Well, there must be someone. A pretty girl always has a lot of friends. What good are friends? Most of them no older than her. It's our duty to find her a good home, an honorable name, regardless of the man's age. And it should be somebody with money. And by that description, Mr. Poster, you've named yourself. Oh. Oh, no. Uh... She turned first of all to you, Isaiah. Besides, I know you're not a man to thrust a suffering lamb back into the wilderness. Maybe she won't have me. She'll marry you, Isaiah. She's a sensible girl. And in the meantime... Mary! Mary. Bring me one of your dresses. Anything, only not too expensive. I'd be good to you, Jenny, if you married me. Like a father. A good father. And he ought to know how with a son your age. You can go back to sleep now, Mrs. Hollis. You've done all you can for tonight. I'll make up Mr. Ephraim's bed for you, Mr. Poster. It ain't as warm there, but you'll be comfortable. Your father couldn't come after you, Jenny, if you married Mr. Poster. You'd be free. An intelligent girl thinks of the future when she chooses her husband. I could marry you to each other right now, Jenny. And you'd be a rich woman. It's for you to decide. When my father died, I turned to the only friend I had, Mr. Poster. He was very kind, taking me into his home and giving you a nice young mother. Think of all that means, Ephraim. You must learn to say yes, ma'am, like a proper son, because I shall demand obedience and love. And if you refuse, my dear son, I shall punish you by not kissing you goodnight. Now, Ephraim, do come home and see what a fine parent I can be. I do think families should be close, don't you? Jenny? Why, Meg Saladine, come in. Oh, if you're busy, Jenny, oh, I can... Oh, don't go away. I, uh... I was just ordering something from Boston. Something to brighten up the house. How nice. Mr. Poster's a very lucky man. This has been a very lonely house for him. Oh, I'm going to make a lot of changes. Meg? Yes? Will you help me? Of course, Jenny. Of course. The water glass always here. And the wine glass here. And, oh, Jenny, you'll have to get rings for the napkins. Now, the biggest plate here. Oh, money changes everything. All I ever needed before was a knife and a spoon. <laughs> but you want to be a lady. Give dinner parties and entertain your husband's friends. I'm sure Cleopatra never bothered about napkin rings. She didn't live in Bangor. Oh, that wouldn't have stopped her. It wasn't by knowing how to set a table that Cleopatra got along. Oh, Jenny. Every time I say something true about men and women, you say Jenny. Why does a proper lady have to be embarrassed about plain talk? It isn't honest, and it makes old maids. Doesn't anyone here care about church? Judge Saladine and Mr. Poster are waiting outside, and I am in the ladies' choir. Didn't apply to me that remark about old maids. I've already met my very special gentleman. 
He's not anyone in Bangor. His name's John Everett. He's a woods boss for your husband. And he's a very educated man. Is he young? A little older than I am. Good looking? He's beautiful. Why don't you marry him? He won't. He has no money. Oh, that's nonsense. Does he love you? Yes. And you love him? Then make him marry you. Oh, Jenny, I wish I knew how. He's not like the others. He... he thinks things out. I'd know how. I wouldn't give him a chance to think. Before me sit the wealthiest families in Bangor. I have seen them before in the privacy of their homes and in their offices. When I came to them to ask for money to enlarge this church, they gave me not enough to erect a temple of branches on a hillside. And so again today, in the house of God, as they sit here with their consciences, I ask them now to pledge funds to enlarge this church. I cannot ask of the poor, but I can ask the wealthy, and the poor shall know the names of those who do not give. Mr. Poster. Judge Saladine. Mr. Burroughs, Mr. Bailey, Mr. Clayton, this is intolerable. If you have no feeling for your fellow men, at least take some interest in the welfare of your own children. Grog shops and low houses cover every inch of our waterfront. Our wealth is poured into devil's half acre. And our young men, your sons, have nowhere else to go. Give me a bigger church. And I'll keep them here. Will no one pledge to the church more than just enough to save his face? Mr. and Mrs. Isaiah Poster will contribute $1,000. If the men of Bangor won't give to the church, the women will. Mr. and Mrs. Partridge pledge $500. Judge Saladine will pledge $1,000. Jenny, I want you to go on working for the church. A church can endure only upon deeds and not lip service. I'd say her lips had done you enough service. A thousand dollars. If you think I have so much money, you ought to... Stop it, Isaiah. You're the luckiest man in Bangor. Oh, Mrs. Post, I'm so glad to see the younger members taking an interest in the church, and I must apologize for not calling on you directly after you were married. That was a wonderful contribution, Jenny. He's a wonderful husband to let me make it. Good morning. Good day, Reverend. Good day, Reverend. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Taint the money of mine, but I'd like to know what you're doing with it before you do it. I gave the money because I hate grog shops and what they do to people. I'm still Jenny. <clears throat> you came home, did you? I thought you'd be on your way to England or somewhere by now. Oh, England is full of architects. I knew you'd come home. 
Isaiah told me he sent you money to travel for a while, but I didn't think you would. I came close to it. I didn't know whether to mind your letter or mind his and go away. It's easy to see which one you thought more of. Now, well, why do we stand here? Let's go in around. And let me do the writing to my son. Mr. Ephraim. My Mr. Ephraim. Why, you've grown as much as you ever will, haven't you? Oh, I'm stunted. You don't know how to bake an apple pie in Cambridge. You'll have one every day if only you'll stay here. He'll stay. You'll find little to keep you in Bangor, Ephraim. After your fine ways in Cambridge, you'll be hard to please in this town. I thought I'd come home and go to work, sir. Work? Yes. What's your time worth to anybody? What did you ever do but waste it? It wasn't wasted. He's an architect. And a good one, too. How do you know? The same way you know he ain't. You heed my advice and you'll go someplace more suitable to a, a gentleman. Anger's a boom town, loud, rough, growing faster than law and order. Takes a strong, stubborn man to make his way here. We need gentlemen, too. For what? To tell you the kind of bonnets and doodads the Boston ladies are wearing? Yes. A young man of fashion would be very popular in Bangor. I'll join you later. Well? Yes, Father. But you said yourself that Bangor was a boom town. Fortunes are made every day. Rich people will want fine houses. You heed what I said in my letter. Travel a bit. What makes you so angry with me? All I did was to come home. I get angry at you because... because of your ways. You think I don't know how you've been spending my money. Hard drink and easy women. I know your kind. I say, you shouldn't upset your father. I'm sorry. All right, father, I'll go away. If you really want me to. I don't think he does. You want your son to live at home, don't you, I say? I've got a headache from all this talk. I'll lock up. It's time we all got some sleep. Shall I light your way? Thank you. It's been a long time, Ephraim, hasn't it? A long time, a lot of changes. Did you really like that kind of woman? That kind he spoke about? I'd rather not talk about it, Jenny. I used to see them near our house before I came here. I used to watch them and wonder about them. I can see how women would be attracted to you. All kinds of women. Good night, Ephraim.
got everything? Yes, all the groceries. But no spectacles. They're hard to find. Oh, I'll tell Dr. Mason to bring you a pair when he comes by tomorrow. All right? Oh, please. Not Dr. Mason. He's a very good doctor, but he won't wait for his money. You're not to worry about money. Your husband worked for mine for a long time, and if Mr. Poster wants to send you a doctor and a pair of spectacles, it's his privilege. Mr. Poster? I'll be by in a few days, and in the meantime, if you need anything, send one of your children. Thank you. That's the way to hold your place in the town, Ephraim. And the people love you for it, Jenny. And I do want my husband and my son to be proud of me. Well, I wanted to see how you spend your days. Thanks for showing me. You've grown, Jenny. My father's wife's a great lady. I think behind Mrs. Isaiah Poster, you'll still find Jenny Hagen. You remember Jenny Hagen? <laughs> oh, that little ruffian. Well, she pushed me in the river right here. That isn't true. The others pushed you in. I pulled you out. Oh, that's right. You did. Of course I did. Didn't we always stick together? Ephraim and Jenny, side by side against the world. Oh, we had good times here, didn't we? Better than we knew. Shall I tell you something? I always think of this as our place. Yours and mine. This is where we first thought we were in love. Silly, wasn't it? This is why you came to tell me your father was going to send you off to college. Yeah. And I said it was because of me. And I said he'd never separate us by sending me away. Oh, Jenny, the things I said. Of course, if you'd been home the night I came to your house, I would have been married to you now. Come into the store and wait on me the way you used to. Another time, Jenny. I want to go up and talk to Father. Hello, Father. Be with you. What you been doing all day? Hmm? Always driving Jenny around. Mighty popular in Bangor, isn't she? She does a lot of good. Spends a lot of money, you mean. If you really mind it, you could put a stop to it. You're very happy with her, aren't you? Yes. Father, I'm going to take your advice. Bangor's no place for me. When will you be leaving? Right away, before the river freezes. I thought I'd spend the winter in Boston and then go off to Europe in the spring. I think your father needs you here, Ephraim. Why, Jenny, you feet like a bird. I didn't hear a sound. You want him to stay, don't you, Isaiah? Why don't you tell him you want him to stay? Can't you be honest with your own son? I'm honest with everybody. You... You might be of some small use to me if you stay on. But if you don't like it here, get out. Only don't come meeching back again. If you go, I'm through with you. I'll take you home. Don't work too hard, Isaiah. Surprise. When Bangor's Lady of Mercy goes out to deliver her packages, her sleigh should fit the season. 
That's a confession you've been thinking of me. Of course I think of you. Yet you've been avoiding me. Careful. Paint. Put it down. You leave the house early and you come home late. You never walk into a room where I am unless someone else is there. Why? Jenny, we shouldn't be standing out here like this. We might just as well be out on Main Street. Anyone could pass by. They wouldn't think anything wrong of it. You wouldn't. If you weren't thinking of me as you do. Jenny, you're married to my father. And his son loves me. He's been so good to both of us. His son has always loved me. I should have gone away. But you couldn't. But you love me. Yes, yes, I've loved you since before I knew the meaning of the word. The day I came home, the time you kissed me. The moment I said I'd stay here, I've loved you and loved you and loved you. Jenny! 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 Father's very ill. Send for a doctor. Yes, Isaiah, I'm here. You keep this up and you'll fall in your tracks. Go to bed, child. Get some rest. No, I'm strong. Stronger than you think. I'll be all right. How is he? Just the same, sir. Is there any possibility of speaking with him, Jenny? There's trouble in town. Dr. Mason says warm weather might bring him around. But that's a long way off. We're at our wit's end. There are too many people in town, too much idleness. Did you hear the shooting last night? <laughs> that's the sort of thing we're up against. Lumberjacks coming to town between jobs with rum and women on their minds. He told us two years ago we should have a police force. We should have listened to him. Well, Jenny, take care of yourself. Meg sends you on love. That Tempest girl stole a lumberjack's wallet. And the drunken fools are firing every tavern in Devil's Half Acre. I can't go now. Didn't Dr. Mason tell you about father? Your father's only one man, Ephraim. We're trying to save the life of the town itself. What do I care about the town? Maybe it needs a good fire to clean it up. He'll go. I'll stay with your father, Ephraim. Hurry, Ephraim. We need those men.
I'm sure I'll be happy just to get my money back. We want to know what's going to happen to her. Since I'm giving you the money, it's my right to decide that. Why do we gibble and gamble about it? There's the girl, there's the river, let's give her a bath! Wait. We'll be waiting for your store to open in the morning. The money isn't there. We're coming up here and collecting. with drink, Jenny. Burning and shooting and stabbing. I didn't take that money. Why, the town's so full of thieves and pickpockets that could have been anyone. They were going to tar and feather me and get upstairs under the rafters and burn the place to the ground. If I'm to go up to Camp 3, I better leave now. I want to be back in the morning. Oh, Jenny, what am I going to do now? I no place to live, no place to go. It isn't right, Jenny, to be smoked out in the streets like an animal. I don't want you to worry about it, Lena. I want you to rest. Lena, do you remember the house I used to live in? Well, I want you to stay here for the night, and tomorrow you move in there. It won't cost you a cent, and uh, if anyone should bother you, you come to me. Oh, you're good, Jenny. That's why you come up in the world. That's what I tell everybody about you. Jenny, you're wonderful. Are you going to take the carriage or the brown mare? I thought the mare would be better. You'll be careful, won't you? I don't want anything to happen to you. Fever's broke. He's breathing better. He's going to get well. <laughs> Jenny, my poor child. You've been so brave. But you mustn't break down now. You mustn't. <laughs> Have gone to bed. Does she ever go to bed, the poor child, nursing and tending her husband? Tell her to come to the Saladine house. The girl will need her. What's the matter? Judge Saladine got into the fight. Hurt? Dead. 
Ask Mrs. Poster to come with us. It needs a woman to tell the girl. Mrs. Poster's been under a great strain. She's gone through enough. You better get someone else. Wait. Pack my things and send them to the Saladine house. I'll be spending the night with Meg. Still fighting. Can't someone ask for permission to bury the dead? I did. So we all sit about and wait for the liquor barrels to run dry. The loafers and drunkards have taken over the town. And for three days, a man like Judge Henry Saladine can't be carried to his resting place. There's a fine victory for rum. Don't talk like a fool. When those woodsmen come in from the timber, they want some excitement after Lumetri's work. You take away their pleasures, they'll go to work in another part of the country. Which only proves that we've got to have a police force, some sort of city government, that's all. You've been too tolerant a man, Isaiah Poster. Too interested in lining your pocket. When my lumberjacks come down from the hills, they'll patrol the town till we get him decently buried. Why don't you lie down for a while? <laughs> you worried about me, Jenny? That you'd found out what kind of a tough old tamarack you'd married. <laughs> Start the funeral. But I said still goes. Get a little law and order in the town, and the grog shops can stay. It's good for business. Where are you going? Those are my boys. Going to give them orders. Look. Oh, I see. I see. Are you hurt? You all right, Mr. Poster? Yes, yes, yes. Now, John, I want you to take some of your men ahead of the funeral procession, put some alongside and some at the rear. Keep it all as quiet as you can. A funeral should seem peaceful. Uh, Jenny, this is John Everett, my wife. You are Mrs. Poster? She sure is. How do you do? John. I thought I heard your voice. Meg. Darling, I'm glad you're here. It's terrible about your father. I hated your being alone when it happened. I pretended to myself that you were with me. It gave me strength. But if we don't have the funeral soon, I'm afraid I, I'm going to break down. Meg, you'll come to our house this evening. You'll be with us, won't you? Thank you. No, no, those aren't my after-dinner pills. These are for my spleen. Let me look again. I'll find them in a minute. And bring your glass of tepid water. Yes, Mr. Poster. Shall we... shall we go into the parlor? No, Jenny, leave them alone. You know how young folks are. John has to go back to the camp in the morning. Go back? Yes, of course. Darling. Our lovebirds have closed the door. The pills, Mr. Poster, and the tepid water. Thank you. Huh? Why must you send him back? I need him up at the camp. He's a woods boss, not a policeman. Of course, if your business means more to you than the safety of your home and family. Jenny, he's got to get that timber cut. That's all there's to it. I'm sorry we were so long, Jenny. I thought you and Mr. Poster would come in. I wanted you to be alone. Surely you can stay in Bangor a few days. I'd like to. She needs you. Well, I'm afraid I'll have to be away for a little while. She won't be alone. I'll take care of her. Till you come back. Well, thank you. That's very good of you. I don't want your father to trade these for whiskey. They are for you and your sisters. 
Mother said to say thank you and God bless you. On to the kitchen and thank Mrs. Hollis. After all, she feeds the chicken. And there's room in the basket for a slice of pie. Would you like a ride in my carriage, Jacob? I can drop you off on the way home. As soon as I get the pie. <laughs> Isn't it a beautiful morning? Jenny, I've been wanting to speak to you. You have? What about? Well, not here. Let's walk down to the river. Oh, but not now, Ephraim. I have so many things to do. Jenny, why isn't it possible for me to have a minute alone with you? But we're alone now. It's not my idea of privacy. Mrs. Hollis in the kitchen, father home every day, Meg following you about. I'm sorry. That's a very short answer, Jenny. What is it? Have you seen somebody else? Stole nearly 10,000 feet of first-run pine. Where? Upper Big Ben. And there's not a trace of who did it. Mr. Poster, unless you get the law to step in, there won't be a choice tree left in that whole section. Law. I own that land, and I'll make my own laws. I've got to make a trip up to the hill country. Timber pirates. I want you to come with me. Me? It's time you saw what pine on the stump looks like. It's my business, and you ought to learn it. Come along, I'll get you something to eat. Thank you, sir. Jenny, I... I, I... What are you waiting for? See why he insists on my going. I'll be dead, useless, wait. And afraid of the water besides. Boats would be bad enough. These will be canoes, flimsy Inuit canoes made of birch bark. Jenny, I can't admit to him that I'm frightened. Tell him not to take me along or not to go at all. I told him I wasn't cut out for that sort of life, that I'd be more of a burden than a help. But he's so stubborn, Jenny. How long must he live, Ephraim? How long must he live between us? Jenny, don't talk like that. I want you to do something for us. You're afraid. I could promise you so many things. And yet, you're afraid. He's my father. As long as he's alive. Why does everything frighten you? You're going to make me very angry. And if I get angry and go on wanting you the way I do, I might tell him what happened between us. Nothing has happened between us. No. But which of us will he believe? Jenny, you couldn't. You know what that would do. He lived a full and useful life. It would be a pity to see him die. But a greater pity to see his life ruined. With a lie? We've been living a lie, Ephraim. And I want to be done with it. I want you to return alone.
began to think you'd never get here. Where's the old man? Where's your father? What happened? What happened? He make old man die. No. We go through swift water. He afraid. He stand up in canoe. And the canoe turned over. Mr. Poster was too weak to swim. They fought to see which one would get that bailing bucket. I guess you can see who won. He... He's dead? I guess he is, ma'am. Where is his body? Must have settled in the quiet water further down. I'm sorry, but we hunted all we could. I'm sure you did. That's the whole of it. Except what Mr. Poster here can tell you. If they hear of anything, they'll let you know. Thank you. Jenny, believe me, it wasn't my fault. I was afraid. You know how afraid I am of the water. You can't come into this house, you wretched coward. You killed your father. My husband was a fine businessman, but it never occurred to him to provide for the handling of his fortune after his passing. Well, there'll be no cold on Friendly Bank telling my woods bosses what to do. No disrespect intended, Mrs. Poster, but it's a man's world we live in up in the woods, and we don't rightly see how a woman fits in. Duncan's yeah, right. He's right, man. You'll go right on living in your world without interference. I'll own the properties. You'll take your orders from your superintendent, John Everett. That's fine. That's fine. That's a great honor, Mrs. Poster, but I... My husband would have selected you, so I'll do it in his place. Thank you for helping me, gentlemen. This will be the first time I've worked for a woman. Uh, uh, John and Mary. Until this meeting, I... I thought I was very much alone in this world. Mr. Poster was a fine man. It'll be an honor working for his lady. We won't give you any trouble, Mrs. Poster. Good day, ma'am. This is a wonderful thing you've done for me, Mrs. Poster. Have you any objections to working for a woman? Well, that depends on the woman. It'll be like managing a kingdom. Mr. Poster used to think of whole townships as other men think of acres. It really is a kingdom he built up. It's too bad. Too bad there is no heir to take the throne? Yes. Poor Ephraim. I never gave him a chance to explain. I accused him without proof. What more could you need? They saw him do it. I didn't. And I know he loved his father. You've got to stop brooding over it, Mrs. Poster. You'll only harm yourself, and it won't help Ephraim. I saw him on the street last week. He was drunk. And Dick and Adams were shouting, you've chosen your damnation, and eternally damned you'll be. There wasn't anything you could do to save him. You're very tired, Mrs. Poster. I won't be after today. I've placed my troubles on your shoulders. Please carry them well for me. Meg, Jenny spent all morning getting them in order. Don't, Meg, you'll only mix them up more. 
I was only trying to help. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I didn't mean to shout. You're tired. In every bone, driving timber was nothing to this. You might as well have remained in the woods for all we see of each other. I, I'm doing my best, Meg, but the work takes up all of my time. I know. I, I wasn't criticizing. I, I was just wishing that... That what? John. Yeah? I'm lonesome. John? Yeah? I'll see you tonight. For dinner? That's a promise. Meg, I haven't seen you for days. Food for a hard-working man. Ah, oh, that's nice. And a cup of tea for both of us. You'll have some, Meg, won't you? If there isn't enough for the three, I'll give up mine. The accounts receivable are all mixed up. I had them in order, but then the wind came in. Oh, later, later. You haven't eaten since morning. Meg, your man doesn't take care of himself. You better do it for him, or there won't be anything left of him to marry. John, there's a rumor that a company's being formed to build steamboats. Is that going to affect us? Not while water freezes, because then steam's no better than sails. But steam trains, Jenny. Just think. There'll be one to Old Town, and one maybe to Holton, and definitely one coming this way from Augusta. And we can load our wood right on our own trains and get into market weeks before the ice breaks. We'll outsmart everyone in the business. There'll be no stopping us once we get started. Jenny, you'll be the richest woman in New England. Then we'll have to make you the richest man. What's happened to Meg? Meg! I ought to be kicked all the way up and down Main Street for the way I treat her. She's more understanding than you think. I'll be with the Temperance League all afternoon, so if there's anything important you want to discuss with me now... Uh, nothing that can't wait. It's Mrs. Hollis in the store. Tearing it apart? No, she wants me to drive her home. Working again tonight? I'm having dinner with Meg. Good. Take better care of her, John. You do neglect her. Goodbye. Bye. Camp three. Thank you. She's a wonderful woman. Someday I'm going to pull a bottle out of his hand and bash his head in. Who are you talking about? Young Poster. You should hear the things he says about her. Has he been talking about her? Why, that drunken little... I've seen her nearly sick with worry over what he's doing to himself. Find out where he stays. I want to see him. Poster! Are you in there? making trouble. Much more than you're worth. I'm worth very little. What happens to me now? You beat me up yourself or some of the boys outside? Come in, come in. Drinks for everybody. No witnesses. I had witnesses when I killed my father. That made her very angry. Where did you last eat? Other. I like it. She hasn't got you hooked already, has she? You'll kill yourself drinking all this stuff without any food inside you. Come on, let's get something to eat. You're doing me out of my dinner. She doesn't know I'm here, and she didn't tell me anything. That's a lie. No one does anything unless she's back of it. I knew what was going to happen. I was afraid of her. I wanted to leave. She didn't have to worry about that. I wasn't man enough to run away. You in love with her? I happen to be engaged to someone else. What difference does that make? Jenny was married to my father. She told me one night she'd marry me if he died. You don't believe a word I say, do you? Oh, like everybody, no one will believe me. Go on, talking. The night before we were due to start, she made love to me till I was nearly crazy. You don't believe that either, but it's the truth. I've always been scared of the water. Even when I was a little boy, Jenny knew that. I was scared in the canoe on the trip, and I... 
couldn't eat or sleep anyway from thinking of her. I only remember being in the water with a bailing bucket holding me up and somebody grabbed for it. I beat him off till he sank and drowned. I didn't know who he was. She's so rotten. You've got to believe me. She's not even a human being. Maybe I did know who he was. I guess I did. She's put the thought in my heart. But if I hadn't done it then, I know I would have played her. I don't know what you're talking about. You didn't make him love you? But of course I did. He was my husband's son. I wanted him to love me. That isn't what he meant. Was he sober when he told you that? Jenny, don't you think I know when a man is lying? Before he talks very much more, you better prove that you had nothing to do with him. Prove? To whom? To the town. The town? Is that what you want? Come back with me to his shack. I want you to face him. Now. But... You know what happens to the roads in the rain? Yes. They get very muddy. But they don't change their direction. Good night. Oh, no. It isn't that I'm afraid. You mustn't believe him. Please. All right. I'll go. rain. We'll wait for him. I'll put the horses in the shed if you'll light the way. See if the shelter's clear. What's the matter, Jenny? Don't say I didn't do it. If I would have said one word to defend him, others would have listened. I killed him, didn't I? Jenny, please. Go inside and sit down. You're shaking. Was it? What happened? They... they were frightened. We're ten miles from town, and we'll have to walk. I understand how Ephraim could have done a thing like that. 
It isn't atonement, it's running away. And you can't run away from the hereafter. It's not Ephraim who's upsetting you. It's because you're here with me. Well, aren't you worried about your reputation? It's a small thing to worry about after that. You better try to sleep. two miles down the road, standing under a tree and waiting for me. And uh, the carriage? Just a broken axle. I can fix it in an hour. Jenny, what about Meg? She won't try to hold you. I know, but to stand up to her and tell her that I love someone else. You won't tell her. A big, clumsy thing like you. It's a woman's job. Oh, no. But she's a friend of mine. I can make her understand. I'll tell her myself. But, John... I'll tell her myself, Jenny. It must have been the storm. That's the only way I can explain it. The storm and the excitement and the lightning struck us. What more can I say? It's nice that we're such friends. It makes it easy to talk this over. There's nothing to talk about. I love him. But if you still want him, he's yours. You know that. You know I'd give him back to you if... if you asked me to. Oh, I suppose I'm a fool. Why? I should have realized that when he said he loved me, he must have said the same thing to you just the day before. No, he didn't. He never said those words to me. I thought it was because he was shy. night. Right after you left the office, Alex Duncan came in. Jenny, I told you I wanted to explain this to her myself. I didn't think you should. I'll be waiting for you outside. wanted to happen like this, Meg. I wanted to be the one to tell you. I don't see what difference it would make. 
It's the same story, isn't it? I suppose so. When will you be married? Right away. In Bangor? I don't know. Jenny will take care of the details. I saw this happening a long time ago. There was nothing I could do. She's waiting for you. Jenny, how could you do a thing like that? I thought if you came here alone, you... You wouldn't come back to me. My dear son, I wanted to be with you this Christmas to see you again and to meet your wife. But all your brothers are bringing their families here, so I can only send you this ring in my place given to me by your grandmother to be passed on to the wife of my eldest son, and I know Jenny will care enough about it to do the same. Will you? What if we only have daughters? We'll have sons. I have made up my mind. What else does your mother say? Well, she talks about my brothers and how deep the snow is, and then she says, A Merry Christmas to you both, my dears. The Lord bless you, Jenny, and make you fruitful. My arms ache for John's first boy. Your mother must be a wonderful woman. I hope that someday you'll say I'm just like her. Well, that won't be easy. Mother had nine sons. But a lot of boys running about the house. Must have been very uncomfortable for her. Oh, she loved it. She would have been uncomfortable with a small family. The Everett's run to numbers. Tell me about your brothers. Are they all tall and handsome like you? Do they all have pretty wives? Why? Prettier than I am? <laughs> you vain little peacock. You know there's only one answer to that. Say. I married the loveliest of them all. And the best. Say, I love you. I love you. Say, we don't need anyone else, ever. Anyone at all. No one. I always lose happiness. I can't seem to hold it. Keep me happy, darling. There's no reason why this should happen to you. No reason why it should happen to any woman. Quite often, nature seems to fumble, Mrs. Everett, and doesn't make a person complete. We can't even hope in a year or two or ever. Not in my opinion. Of course, you're free to consult with another doctor. I can give you the name of a very fine one in Boston, and I know of another in Philadelphia. I believe you. You mustn't decide, my dear, that the future is altogether dark and empty. You can adopt a child, you know. It should give some release to your normal womanly emotions. I want a child of my own. You won't talk to my husband, will you? I'll tell him myself when I think it's the right time. Of course. You see, he wants children. He's very fond of them. what love was before you. I know now I was never married to Isaiah at all. Jenny, I want you to forget Isaiah. 
I want you to forget your whole life before I came into it. You know, a lot of new furniture isn't going to change that house. Why do you want to go on living in it? Oh, but it's a good house, John. It'll stand for a long time. At least until we know just where to build another. Well, I'm not finicky about where it'll be. I just think you want to go on living in that old tomb. What do you say, Jenny? Should we start building our own house? But that is our house. Belongs to Isaiah Poster. Let him keep it. Oh, but he's dead and he left it to me. Belongs to him and his son and it's full to the roof with sorrows. I want to get out of it. I want new rooms and more of them. And for the sake of our children, I want light and air. There are enough rooms now. Which isn't the right house, Jim. It's too close to Devil's Half Acre. It isn't a place to bring up children. There won't be any children. Hmm. Nonsense. Is it? Ask Dr. Bailey. He'll tell you. Seems there are some things we haven't talked about. When did you learn this? Some time ago. What exactly did Bailey say? I don't remember. Makes a lot of difference, doesn't it? How do you mean? Between us. Doesn't make any difference at all. There are many things a husband and wife can live for. I wonder what you'll think in a few years from now. I'll think that you're more beautiful than ever. And that I love you very much. Oh, look. There's Lincoln Petridge. He's a great man. He has special powers. Where was the darkness so great that you thought your sin was hidden? There are eyes that search out every sin. There is a tongue that will accuse you on the judgment day. There is a hand that is terrible in its strength. What is so beautiful as a pure woman? What is so vile as an evil one? The good women of Bangor, such loud amens and nodding of heads. Because I spend my fury upon her, and not on you. How pious you are. How good with your eyes cast upward. Can one of you step forward and say, this is my soul. See how it shines. Can one of you hope to escape the terror? How sweet are the ladies of Sodom and Gomorrah. How sweet in silks and satins and laces and ruffles. Here in the house of God. How costly must be the perfume that will not let you smell brimstone. What great secrets are among you? Who is named vanity? And who is lust? What woman has put away our husband? Which of you has taken a man from her sister? For this is your sister. Come forward and sit with her and be counted. You cannot hide behind your beauty. Your beauty has made you evil, and evil destroys itself. Your soul will become naked. The truth will be revealed. Confess now, while there is yet time. You cannot escape. You can never escape. There will be no sons to mourn for you, no daughters to weep for you. Evil does not propagate itself. It withers in its own fire and is consumed. The lips of a strange woman drip honey, and her mouth is smoother than oil. 
But her end is bitter as wormwood, sharp as a two-edged sword. What's the matter, Jenny? I want light. It's so dark. Why do you go to those meetings? It's not like ordinary church going. You come home exhausted and afraid. He was talked to me. Straight to me. I mean, what is it? The pit he talks about isn't down below. It's up here. I don't know why I listen to him. He tries to trap people tries to make them admit things that aren't true. He's not any better than the people he talks about. No, he's right. The town is becoming a sinkhole. That horrible man. To say to me what he did. He wasn't talking. He was talking to people like Lena. Jenny, I've come to a decision. We're going to put Lena out of your house. No. I don't care what she meant to you when you were a child. I'm talking about what she is now. I don't want you to be connected with her. Why not? In what way is she different from us? Except that she's more honest. She goes out of your house tomorrow. I don't want her sins on your hands. You good, righteous man. You hypocrite. Telling others what they must and must not do while you live in this house with me. Do you know what went on in this room before Ephraim killed his father? Jenny. Do you remember the things he said about me? You said he was drunk and afraid. Of course he was afraid. We're all afraid. There's hell opening under our feet. Jenny. This is where he sat. Sit down, John, and I'll show you how I made him kill his father. Sit down and I'll kiss you the way I kissed him. Why do you look at me like that? Why do you pretend everything he told you was true and you knew it? You knew it! Oh, I don't know what I'm saying. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Go to bed, Jenny. Please go to bed. Mrs. Hollis back from church. John, it's time for bed. what I said. You know I couldn't have done it. I never believed it. I tried not to believe it. Because you love me. You still do. Yes. Darling, don't be unhappy. We know each other now and that's good. There'll be no more misunderstandings, no more quarrels. Oh, darling, there'll be just the two of us. No, there won't. 
There'll be three. There'll always be Ephraim. I'm looking for Mr. Everett. I thought he might be with Reverend Thatcher. Father isn't here right now, but if you'd like to wait... Oh, no, thank you. I have no time. Good morning. Is Miss Salad on home? No, Mrs. Everett. She went out. Has, has Mr. Everett been here? Oh, no, I haven't seen him. Thank you. Oh, I thought it was Mr. Everett. Do you know where he is? He didn't come in here, ma'am. I slept here last night on account of the rain, and you're the first one in. Mr. Everett tells me you're sending a school teacher up to every camp with more than two families. That's a handsome thing to do, ma'am. I guess you're mighty fond of children. Duncan, who did sleep here last night? Was it you or Mr. Everett? Ma'am, I told you. Oh, that's just another one he has. He sometimes... He wore this hat when he brought me home from church last night. And he wore it again when he went out for a walk. Now, why aren't you supposed to tell me where he is? You put me in an awful fix, ma'am. I promised Duncan, him... Duncan, he isn't well. Couldn't you see that? What good is a promise to a sick man when it keeps his wife from helping him? Is that the trouble with him? I kind of thought he looked funny around the eyes. Where is he? Well, I'm not telling you, mind you, but... that'd be the wrong kind of hat to wear up in the pine country. Where in the pine country? Fire watchers, Captain. Indian Hill. When will he be back? I don't know. Two, three days, I guess. Said he wanted to go up there and think a while. Oh, I got a loose mouth. That's my trouble. Makes two people I told where he is. Who is the other? Miss Saladine. Miss Saladine. Came in here about an hour ago and dug it out of me just like you did. Said she saw him last night alone. Acted like something was wrong. Next time he trusts me with anything, it'll... It was very good of you to come up here, Meg. But there's really nothing you can do to help me. No one can help me but myself. My whole life with Jenny has been the act of running away. I ran away from the woods where I belong. And again, I ran away from the truth when Ephraim tried to tell it to me. I forced myself not to believe him. I understand. If you had, you never would have married Jenny. No. But this time, I'm not running away. Right or wrong, my place is with Jenny. I love her, and I'm going back to her. John, I'm glad. Because I believe that her love for you has made her as good as everyone always thought she was. Shall we go now? Jenny will be anxious. Meg, 
Hurry up and get a doctor. Camp three. I... I saw you with Meg, and... I know. I tried to hurt you. I wanted to hurt you. Don't, Jenny. Lie still. You don't know how I loved you so much. I'm afraid. Oh, John, where will they bury me? Jenny, don't talk about dying. Don't let them bury me with Poster or Ephraim. Don't let them. Jenny, you're going to be all right. There'll be a doctor along and we'll take you home. I know. They'll bury me with Ephraim. They'll bury me in that house with the Ephraim. Oh, Jenny, darling, listen to me. Nothing's going to happen to you. Not now or ever. As long as I'm with you. And I'll always be with you. I never went away. You do love me. I love you more than ever. I wanted so many things. I wanted the whole world. But it was really only you. Jenny. Jenny. Jenny.